book of Jeremiah chapter 3, we're reading verse 12. The book of Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 12. Let's hear the word of God. It says, go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return, backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Amen and amen. Beloved, this is the word of the Lord, and it's calling on every Christian, every Adventist. It says, return, backsliding Adventist. Return, backsliding Christian, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you. For I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Beloved, this is a call to repentance. As we start this new year, as we've entered into the year 2024, as God has given you, God has given me grace to see this new year. God is calling us to repentance and reminds us that he is merciful and he will not remain angry forever. And so if, 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 we, if we went astray in 2023, 2024, God is calling on you. He has a plan for you, he says, Plans of good and not of evil. One that will lead you to an expected end. And so heed this call, even on this holy Sabbath day, as we come to worship in his presence. May the Lord guide us as we prepare our hearts to delve deep in his word, to be obedient unto his word, and to worship him in truth and in spirit, even as we've entered the year 2024. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify your name. We lift you high. We thank you for taking charge over us all throughout the week and brought us safely here to worship with you in your presence. We ask that your Holy Spirit be with us. Your Holy Spirit guide and protect us. Your Holy Spirit direct our ways, Father, as we are before thee, we ask you, Father, to revive us, to rejuvenate us, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Father. Help us that we walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. But, Father, lead us. Lead us that we hear your call to repentance and walk according to your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We're going to go on our first music break. And when we return, it will be time to pray.
Beloved, God always has a wall of protection around us. You know, when God praised Job for his integrity, Satan quickly replied, You have put a wall of protection around him. Take away everything he has and he will surely curse you. This can be found in Job chapter 1. So God permitted Satan to test Job. But he placed limits on how far he could go. Friends, when you feel as if you are at a breaking point and can't handle anything anymore, the Holy Spirit lifts the wall of the blood of Jesus and tells Satan, this far and no further. It's time to pray. It's time to pray knowing that God's got our back. It's time to pray knowing that once we commit our lives into God's hands and do according to his will, obey his commandments, there is nothing that we should be scared of. Beloved, when your resources are depleted and you think you are going under for the last time, God has provided refuge for you. And therefore, trust in Him. Have faith in Him. Believe in Him. When we are pressed on every side, we should know that we have a God who would not see us crushed. Perplexed or in despair, God's got our back. The psalmist said in Psalm 61 verse 2, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And so, Father, beloved, let's pray. Just like the psalmist and request of the Father. And request of him that when we are overwhelmed, when the challenges are too much for us, that he leads us to the rock that is higher than us. But we need to rejoice. Beloved in Christ, we need to rejoice even as we pray. We need to rejoice for God has placed us under his arms 
And the enemy can never harm us. Beloved, trust in the word of God. And stand on the word of God to pray. Stand on the word of God to pray. Because no matter what he does, the enemy cannot harm us. So far as we bury ourselves in the chamber of the Lord's heart. Pray. Pray because all you have to do is to lift your eyes towards heaven. Beloved, pray. Pray. Don't be despaired by the challenges that you face. Or how bleak you think the future looks. Pray. God wants to hear your voice. Pray, pray and thank God for the wall of protection that he has hedged around you. Father, thank you for the wall of protection you've hedged around us. And help us to remember that we are your children. And you have a special plan and purpose for our lives. Beloved, pray. Pray because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God is overwhelming. Is overwhelming in our lives. And we know that grace is the most important concept taught in the Bible. Scripture is filled with verses about grace. And even though it is not something we deserve, God is kind to us and wants the best for our life. And so we have to pray for grace. For, for some of you who might have, have listened to Chef uh, Faleatu, I, I hope I got that pronunciation right. I mean, the chef who, who just completed the cookathon with, I think, 220 hours, trying to set the world record. She spoke about a period when she, 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 she couldn't wake up from, from bed, but it only took the grace of God. She realized that it took only the grace of God. And one time when Joe Meto was interviewed and they spoke about him winning the Artist of the Year at the Ghana Music Awards and asked whether he thought he deserved it, he says, sometimes the children of God receive what others think they don't deserve because of grace. And so grace is important in our lives. Simply put, grace is the unmerited, unearned love and favor of God. So, beloved, pray for grace. Pray for grace unto your life. Don't take it for granted. Pray for grace in your life this 2024. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Bible says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, Having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That is grace. Beloved, claim it. Claim the promises of God. Claim it. Pray that God's grace and favor will never depart from you. That in times of difficulties, when everybody thinks it's impossible, it is that grace that will see you through and you confess with your lips that if it hadn't been for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Beloved, pray. Pray. Because Isaiah 40, 31 tells us that, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings, wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint because of grace. Beloved, pray for grace. Pray that God's grace will never depart from you. Continue to pray. The Lord loves to hear your voice. Pray. Pray. But, demon, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is grace. It is the grace of God that leads us. Father in heaven, we thank you. We glorify your name and lift you high. We thank you, Father, for the wall of protection that you formed around us. But Father, it just didn't happen. It is because of your love that you have for us. Father, please help us that we acknowledge this love, that we become obedient children and walk according to your commands and live by the faith of Christ Jesus. Father, Lord, bless us with the grace, your grace that you granted us. You saved us, Father, and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of your purpose and grace. And this grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Therefore, Father, help us. Help us to hold on, even in difficult times, even in times that we feel perplexed, even in times that we lose all hope. Please give us that grace to hold on to you, that we not use our lips to curse you, but we speak glory to your name day and night. Please grant us the strength to hold on and stand firm in our faith. For Father, I know, and I know others also know, that our deliverance is on the way. And soon, and very soon, we will meet in heaven. Thank you for hearing our prayer. May your Holy Spirit be with us. Bless us this Holy Sabbath day. We've prayed in the mighty and worthy name of the Son and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Beloved, we're going to go on our next musical break. And when we return, the voice you'll be hearing will be that of Pastor Dr. Divine Ayivo. i 
Happy Sabbath. Praise God, we're in 2024. A good year. His blessings brought us through it. We have made it. Praise Jesus. Today we're going to learn something very new. Brand new. You won't read this in any book. Only here you're going to hear it. And uh, a little book is being prepared for it. That will be more detailed because I can't preach the whole book here. I wrote something from this sermon to make it a little more available to everybody who needs it. Scripture is taken from Deuteronomy 28 verse 13. It reads, and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord your God. Which I command thee this day. To observe and do them. So God will make me the head and not the tail. If I listen to the commandment, there's a secret in the commandment. Today we want to find it. What commandment? Of course the Ten Commandments. Verse 12, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give rain unto your land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Praise Jesus. This is the word of the Lord to his commandment, keeping children in all ages. You will be rich. Say amen to that. Wealthy. Say amen to that. Not big beggarly and always borrowing money from people. Commandment keeping children of God are not designed to be borrowing money from people. Say amen to that. 2024 will be a different year for you. In life we have objectives growing up. We have desires. How we want our life to be. That's our initial growing up. We call it plan A. How things must be in our life. 
What year we're going to marry? What year we're going to build a house? What year we're going to buy our first car? What kind of car is it going to be? All that. Dreams. Come true. I was going to be an aeronautic engineer. See where I am now. I'm a preacher, man. That's how it is. We make our plans. And then, growing up, things happen. The plan A goes away and we fall in plan B. That's where most of us are. Some of you went to school for specific subjects to put you in specific areas. But look at where you are. Things happen. Things don't work out as you've always planned. There are things that happen to us without notice. Death, divorce, death, disasters coming at us. Situations in life changes and we need to have money to take care of some of these disturbances that come up upon us when we least prepared for it. So you read in the scriptures, Matthew 25, 35 to 36, God said, Jesus said, for I was hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came unto me. You will be thinking, Your life will be so good and you'll be doing all this to unfortunate people. Not always. Unfortunately, sometimes you yourself will be at the receiving end. You will be hungry. Somebody will feed you. You don't imagine it now. But there are so many people they were doing very well in life all of a sudden, they had a stroke. All the money is gone. Somebody has to feed them. Somebody has to take care of them. Things happen in life. But if you have a little money, it goes a long way. You know, people love you a little better if you have money. You don't know. If you get sick and you have money, people will come. Be, if you don't have any money, you are, only church people will come. Their own family will run away from you. That's how our world is. That's how our world is. Christ, the creator of the universe, he was hungry. He looked for figs to eat. And he cursed the tree. On the cross, he was naked and thirsty. In life, so many things happen. So as we are in Christ, we need to be proactive and humble ourselves and prepare for anything that can happen. We need to have a little cushion. That's what I'm going to be preaching about. Amen? It's all in your mind first. First, you got to think properly. Muhammad Ali is a boxer when I was growing up. He said, if my mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. Many of you have an erroneous understanding about who a Christian is. You believe a Christian is supposed to be poor. You mistreat Blessed are the poor in spirit. He said poor in spirit, not poor in the pocket. Make a big difference. Poverty is never a blessing. Never. You can quote me anywhere. Poverty to be poor is never a blessing. Poverty is a curse if you allow me to speak. 
Five cities, you don't have it. Ten cities, you don't have it. You can't even eat food. No. It's not a blessing. The blessing of the Lord, it makes you rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. Praise Jesus. Amen? Impossibility is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Your mother is poor. Your father is poor. It doesn't mean you must also be poor. Change your world. Change it. Don't accept it. Don't. Pray and change it. Don't make the mistake they made. Be thinking. Renew your mind. Prepare yourself. Whatever happens, make sure you're going to survive. I'm not talking about stealing and taking bribes. No. You don't receive blessings from the Lord like that. Learn to work. You will need some money to get by in difficult circumstances. We have faith. We can pray hard. Miracles happen. But you must work. Say amen to that. You have to work. That's how the prescription the Bible gives. Amen? Faith is good. But get some money with the faith. A merry heart is like good medicine. Too much stress will kill you. Everyone needs to get money. Adventists don't preach about money, but today you're going to hear it. Even in the church, the church needs money. That's why we got so many uncompleted church buildings. The church needs money. And when the church members have money, they will give the tithe to the church and the church they will give to building fund and the church will be equipped financially. We need money. But money can only come to those who are prepared and know how to handle it. Now let's get to the meat of the lesson. The title of this sermon is Pastor Ayivo Sikasam. Don't attack, attack Hope TV or any church. No. You got a problem with this? Me. My number is on the screen when I'm finished. Pastor Ivo Sikasem. God gave us ten commandments. Amen? Exodus 20, 1 through 17. There's only one commandment in the Ten Commandments that teaches you about money. Money is very important. The just God would not leave his chosen people without teaching them how to make money. Because he knows we need it. Take a closer look at our scripture reading. Deuteronomy 28, 13, it says, and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only and shall not be beneath never. If thou art hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day to observe it. Observe the Ten Commandments. Look into it and you find the secret of making money is embedded in the Ten Commandments. It's very important for children of God to make money and be comfortable. That is the only time they can be cheerful givers of their tithe and offerings. And praising Jesus with joy. Don't you envy me? I'm always happy and boisterous and happy. Praise 
Jesus. 2024, you will be the same way. Say hallelujah. You are listening to me today. You're never going to be poor anymore if you follow what I'm going to share with you today. Poverty is scary. Poverty is not a blessing. Don't ever pray to be poor and think poverty and suffering is what a Christian's life should be. Wrong. No. Not having food to eat after you had it before is a very miserable experience. So listen very carefully. Ecclesiastes 10.19 A feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry but money answereth all things. Barnabas was not poor. Peter had a fishing boat, a fishing net, and a house. He was not poor. Matthew was not poor. Joseph of Arimathea was not poor. We cannot be poor either. God included making money in the Ten Commandments. So if you know the Ten Commandments and you are Seventh-day Adventist, you are closer to making more money than the regular person. Say amen to that. Let's begin our analysis. The fourth commandment is a commandment that has to do with money. The fourth commandment. The one you always remember. The Sabbath commandment, that is where Seventh-day Adventists are most blessed as human beings. If you are not an Adventist, I urge you to become one. Give me a call. I'll send you Bible studies. Prepare you for baptism so you can be a double. You get double. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. Labor and do all your work. We work for money, right? We get up daily and go to work so we can make money. And God is giving you six days to work and make money. You cannot get money without working. You'll be a thief. So you must work. Get a job. Do something legal to make some money. But the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in it thou shalt not do any work. You cannot make money on the Sabbath day. You close shop. You go to church, return a faithful tithe and offering with joy, cheerfully, because the Lord has blessed the work of your hands and you have made some money. On the Sabbath, seven people are mentioned in the commandment who are not to work. They have to stop making money. That means they used to make money during the week. But on the Sabbath, stop. Yourself, your son, your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, your cattle, and the stranger that is within your gate. Seven income streams are not to make money. On the Sabbath, no work is done. You will do all your work in the six working days. You will recognize God as your Lord and worship him, returning a faithful tithe and offering on the increase you have gained by God's grace. Pray for your work and let God lead. Proverbs 16, 3, commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts shall be established. Seven income streams are closed on the Sabbath day. On the six working days, all the seven income streams have to be generating some income for you. Any household with seven income streams would never be poor. If they make the money and return a faithful tithe and offering as appreciation and acknowledgement of the fact that all good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. You cannot make money depending on one income like most people do. One income is never enough. At least 
a couple of working fine. You get a little something. But to get to this stage, no. Got to be more. You'll be living from paycheck to paycheck. If you have a serious emergency, you will have to be looking for people to borrow money from. But the blessings say you shall, you shall not borrow. You shall be giving people. But if you have seven sources of income, someone is working for you, selling mobile money, another selling fruits, another selling water, another selling roasted plantain, another selling bread, another selling kinky, another selling kelewele, another selling bread. I'm giving you simple ideas. The ones that are rich, they can diversify their portfolios. I'm not talking to them. They, they're rich already. I'm talking for you people who have uh, 100 Ghana is a big deal. When they say 5,000, your heart beats. No. You I'm talking to. 2024, follow this simple plan. And let the Lord bless your life. Seven income streams and rest on the Sabbath. You will come and give a huge testimony. December 2024, God did not intend for his children, especially Seventh-day Adventists, to be poor and beggarly. A songwriter wrote hymn number 468. My father is rich. In house is and land, he owes the world or of the world in his hands of rubies and diamonds, of silver and gold. His calf as a fool, he has riches untold. I'm a child of a king. A child of a king with Jesus my Savior. I'm a child of oh, a king. A child of a king is never poor. A child of an MP is never poor. How about a child of a king? Praise Jesus. Own seven houses, own seven Ubers. Own seven taxes. Get seven people putting money in your hands every day. And you'll be so rich. Your bonds will be filled to overflow. But when you are so rich, full, and wealthy, remember your God. May God grant you grace to get out of poverty. You may be talking about how do you get money to start? Am I going to get a loan? Getting a loan in Ghana is 35%. It's not wise to get a loan to start a small business. The, but there's a very old method of putting money together called Susu. Susu, 12 loyal, faithful people can come together. Every month, they give 200, 200, 200, 200, 200. Each that's 2,400. That's good enough to start a little business. You are not going to start all seven at once. You can start small, 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 but get a book, see what your profit is. You invest 200 and you sell the bananas, and then you make 300. Your profit is a hundred. Pay yourself from it. Many people work and they don't pay themselves. You have to pay yourself. Everybody who works must pay themselves. It's the law of money. You have to pay yourself. They pay you not so you can give the money. You, you work hard and you give your money to everybody. And then you are empty. No. Pay yourself. Put it in a bank you cannot touch. You got to pay yourself. 
If not, you will never have money. Pay yourself and when you look, go look at it a little bit and close it. Look at it. Oh, I have 4,000. Yeah. Next month, I will make it 4,500. Yeah. That is for you. For your hard work. Amen? On payday, everybody collects the gift to one person. And they keep doing it. And they keep doing it. By the end of the year, everybody got that money. And you invest it. You invest the money into something. Don't spend it. Don't spend it. Some of you don't even have a budget. You just get money and you spend it. No. You know you should know exactly how much you're gonna spend in January. Have the numbers down before the money comes. Always plan ahead of money. Don't wait for money to come before you start planning. You will make the most stupid mistake and all the money will go away. Plan before it comes. 5,000 is coming. Fine. I'm going to save 2,000 from that. Yes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. 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 You have to plan ahead. That's what we call budget. Make a budget ahead of the money coming. If not, you see sometimes money will come and then the money comes and you don't know what happened to it because you didn't plan how you're going to spend it. At least if you budget and you check, you will know, I, yes, I plan to do this, I did it. I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. So you know exactly where your money went. Some of you don't know. It just comes and goes. So you have no savings. Because you never plan to have it anyway. You never plan to have it. If you don't plan to succeed, it means you plan to fail. So take money business very seriously. Ellen White wrote, <clears throat> remember that you will never reach a higher standard that you set yourself. Then set your mark high and step by step, even though it be painful effort by self-denial and sacrifice, ascend the whole length of the ladder of progress. Let nothing hinder you. Faith has not woven its mesh about any human being so firmly that he need to remain helpless in and in uncertainty. Opposing circumstances should create a firm determination to overcome them. The breaking down of one barrier will give greater ability and courage to go forward, press with determination in the right direction, and circumstances will be your helpers, not your hindrance. I love Ellen White. Christ Object Lesson, page 331, 332. Deuteronomy 28, 13. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only that shall not be beneath if thou, thou hearken unto the Lord. If you saw all the names that are written people in this fourth commandment, they never said anything by your wife. The wife works 24 hours. The wife is always working. So she's not included in that list. So, pay your wife. You heard me. Pay your wife. Yeah, my wife is working, I know. But every month, give her 20 or 30 just for being a good wife. Pay your wife. 
She does more than you. Pay her something. Make her happy. May God bless you. Have a beautiful 2024. Make money and return a faithful tithe and offering. May God bless us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor, Dr. Divine Ayevo, for allowing God to use you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless all of us and grant us everything we need to hold on and to stand there in him, even if it's in our finances. Beloved, you've heard the word of God. You think you need further Bible study. You want someone to speak to. Beloved, call. Call Pastor Ivo now. His numbers is on the screen. Call him now. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to speak with you. You need prayers, call him. You need further Bible study, call him. Alternatively, you can send us a message on our WhatsApp line, which is on the screen, 055-968-0066. Or you can send us an email at hopetvghana at gmail.com. We are in a new year. And I want to thank our angels of hope. You've been with us all through 2023. We are grateful. We are thankful. May God bless you and keep you. 2024, we believe that you still be with us, hang on with us. Invite your friends, your family to also support Hope Channel by being an angel of hope. This program couldn't have been possible without you. And therefore, we wish to thank you and say continue supporting us, for God will never leave you nor forsake you. Till we meet again next Sabbath, always remember to read your Bible and to pray every day. Read your Bible and to pray every day. That is the only weapon we have in this warfare here on earth. And know that God loves you dearly. Shalom.
you are touched, inspired, and blessed by this message and want further Bible studies or want to be baptized, please send a WhatsApp or text message to 055-96-800-66. Alternatively, you can send an email to hopetvghana at gmail.com or call 0302-959065. God bless you and keep watching Hope Channel, your preferred Christian channel.